Ah, Mr. Shyamalan, we meet again. Today we're going to take a quick look at his latest movie, Knock at the Cabin. Eric and Andrew, played by Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge, are on vacation with their adopted daughter Wen, played by Kristen Kui. But their vacation is interrupted when they are taken hostage in their cabin by four armed strangers who claim they are there to prevent the apocalypse. And in order for that to happen, one member of the family must sacrifice themselves so the rest of humanity can live. Is the apocalypse actually going to happen? Are these people just crazy? Bit of column A, bit of column B? Who knows? I'm sure I don't have to tell you that Mr. M. Night Shyamalan has been very hit and miss throughout his career. Some would say he hasn't hit at all, but for the record, I don't agree. And lately, he's been making relatively low-budget movies that he finances himself. Uh, kind of funny seeing some of the comments online like, Who keeps giving Shyamalan money to make movies? No one. No one is giving him money. He's doing it on his own. And... That may be for the best. I can think of two times that he's been hired to direct a big-budget, would-be blockbuster. The Last Airbender and After Earth. And both were disasters. The simple, low-budget stuff is much more his lane. He's had better success there. Success is not guaranteed, of course, Glass, but the odds are better. And I think Knock at the Cabin is one of his better efforts. It's far from perfect, there are times when it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I can't say I wasn't entertained. These four strangers have been called together by some sort of shared dream, a vision of the future, and they all represent different aspects of humanity. I know this because the movie actually spells this out. Shyamalan does not do subtlety. Not the best at dialogue either. And of course the question is, are they really trying to prevent the apocalypse, or are they just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? And because we're dealing with a gay couple and a multiracial family, it's not out of the question that these people would be targeted by nutjobs. And it doesn't help that at least one of these strangers, played by Rupert Grint, seems to have some nutjobby tendencies. And even as they turn on the news and they're watching all of these horrible disasters happen all over the world, millions of people dying, they're still doing a pretty good job of keeping you guessing. And part of that probably comes from the fact that it is M. Night Shyamalan, and of course you're always waiting for the Shyamalan twist. But maybe the twist is that there is no twist. If that makes sense. There are some aspects of this that don't make a whole lot of sense if you really think about them, or even if you're not really thinking about them. And there are some moments where they push the boundaries of suspension of disbelief pretty hard. All of these news programs from around the world are showing what appears to be cell phone footage taken from people who actually were there when these disasters occurred, and the end result is those people are dead. But somehow their phones survived. I know this isn't actually a found footage movie, but the rule still applies. You have to be able to explain, how was this footage found? But what makes the movie work, and what allows me to overlook its flaws, is the strength of the cast. Groff and Aldridge are both great as Daddy Eric and Daddy Andrew, as they are called. Kui is adorable AF. And throughout the movie, we get these little flashback scenes that show how this family came together, and the struggles they've been through, and how much they truly love each other, and it's really hard not to like them. Unless you're a nut job. And after putting up with all these years of prejudice, now they got these crazy people beating down their door and ranting about the apocalypse. It never ends. And these four crazy people are also really good in their roles. There's never a moment where you doubt that they truly believe what they're saying about the world ending. And with the exception of Rupert Grant's character, who really couldn't care less, they're all very conflicted about asking a member of this very nice family to sacrifice themselves. Batista's character in particular is very interesting. He's supposed to be a second grade teacher. Not the first thing that comes to mind when I'm picturing a second grade teacher. But he honestly makes it work. And you know, Dave probably would be a good second grade teacher. Would you misbehave in class if that was your teacher? I wouldn't. I certainly don't think this movie is going to win any awards, but honestly, it wasn't half bad. It is one of Shyamalan's better efforts, and I would say it's at least worth a rental. And that's all I have to say about Knock at the Cabin. Till next time, take care.